Hey everyone, hope you're doing fantastic today. So I wanted to start off with um, something a little different, let you know that. So this video is going to be more about technique and a little less about getting to a finished painting, okay? Uh, because I want to show you guys how you can take advantage of some of the neat things that Rebel does to get some different effects and to get some different looks and, and then let you play around with it. So I'm going to work on some techniques. Um, and also these are based on some questions I got from recent videos, both from patrons and from subscribers over on YouTube as well. So what we're going to work on, uh, people asked about doing like foliage and that kind of stuff and reflections and different ways to do it. So I wanted to show you a couple different things that you could work on and try to play around with it. So I have here uh, my normal canvas of 8 by 10 inches. Okay, at 150 DPI, because again, I can use the nano pixel to enlarge this if I want to. One of the fantastic things about Rebel 5 Pro. Um, so I've got that set up here. I have the canvas. I think this is the Aquarelle. Yeah, right here. Does not matter. I'm just using that because I just kind of like the texture. Uh, it's at 250% texture scale. So that's what I've got it set to. I'm going to go up here and pick a different color for the canvas instead of white because I just want to get rid of the white. And I think I'm going to go with um, maybe something along these lines, maybe just a little bit warmer, maybe something kind of like that. I don't know. It could also go a little bit bluer and maybe that'll be kind of some sky peeking through. So I've got that there and it gives us a good kind of look for an underpainted background. Canvas is dry, so just to make sure, we're going to dry it right here. So you go to Shift D or just down to this icon. And what I want to do is just kind of lay in some foliage and show you how to do that without using like the stencils and stuff for now. So I'm going to go to the oil brush, oil and acrylics. I'm going to come down here to the dabber brush. Okay, so I've got this one right here. It is on the default settings. There's nothing different that I've played around with. And just let me go over here and make sure and yeah, put it completely default. We've got this dabber brush. So now I'm going to pick um, just some colors over here, some of these greens. I'm on the oil pigments, which honestly I can't remember if this came with Rebel or if this is off of their website, but I think it's off their website or it came with it, one of the two. But you've got these greens here, like the phthalo green, the permanent green, the oxide of um, chromium, then the permanent green light and the cadmium green. So these are some really good greens to start with. I'm going to go with a little bit darker green here. So this is um, just going here for this. And actually, you know, we could go, let's just start with the phthalo green, which is kind of a bluer color. And then let's click that, go a little bit darker like so. I'm going to use the right bracket key to come up in size. That's a little too big for what I want. There we go. Now all I'm going to do is kind of put in some random uh, shapes here and there. I'm just really not worried about this. This is going to become kind of some of the background. So I'm just roughly scrubbing this in so that we can get some different spots here and there. Then I'm going to go to one of these other colors and just kind of start laying it in. I'm thinking my light source would be coming from the upper right if I was going to have this be a finished painting. So uh, I want to get these just kind of laid in. And, that, and that's one of the techniques is that as you're putting this in here, think about these in masses of uh, bushes and trees. Okay, so like if this was a really thick foliage area. Okay, so if in other words, if this was like something in the background and just a really deep, dark forest kind of look. Okay. So um, my texture paper strength is set to about 40% uh, for the brush. And the visual settings right here, I've got the paper texture up to 6, the paint texture to 7, and then everything else is basically default here. I can even click default again, and you'll see that everything is default. Okay. So all I'm doing now is I'm thinking, okay, this, this was background, and I wanted to have kind of a foresty scene in the background, how would I lay that out? Well, it's not important that I have every, you know, leaf and everything painted, but instead I want to have just masses of shapes and colors. So now I'm going to go with that and I'm going to pick this 
Um, yeah, so this is permanent green we're on now. So I'm going to go to chromium oxide. All right, and just kind of blend this in here and there. And what I'm thinking of is like maybe where leaves have changed color. Um, I've got some of that, you know, kind of look to it. And I'm going to grab the um, permanent green here. And you can see that this jumps up my color a little bit warmer. It's got more yellow in it. And so I'm going to think of, okay, where would sunlight, if this was from the upper right, where would my sunlight be hitting it? Now you can move the brush sizes around like with the bracket key. So if you want to make little clumps of brush, bushes and trees and stuff here and there, you can. Okay. But I don't want to necessarily do that because I don't want to get lost in trying to make this look like bushes and trees. It's going to do it itself because remember, this is going to be in the background and be slightly out of focus. So that is fine. I'm going to grab this cadmium green, which is going to add even more yellow. And I'm going to use this just a little bit more sparingly, just here and there. Okay. And kind of get some interest like so. All right. So just a mass of colors. I mean, if you squint your eyes at this and look at it, it's going to look kind of like trees and stuff because you've got all these little broken up edges and, and stuff like that. So your brain's going to start interpreting that as leaves. Okay. Uh, that's how impressionism works. And that's what you're doing here. So I'm going to take this black and I'm going to put in a few extra dark spots where some of this darker stuff is just to kind of push it back a little more. All right. So I've got some of that put in there. And or pop up my other window there. So I wanted to move it. So down on the bottom, kind of put that in there. All right. And I can just lay some of this in there. Now what I want to do is I want to go up here to the blend tool and you can do it by pressing in or pressing or just going clicking on it. And I'm going to select the textured one here. Okay. Again, default. And now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to scrub, but I'm just going to tap on these. Okay. So all I'm doing is where these meet, I'm going to tap. I'm actually going to use my mouse. You can maybe hear it clicking because I don't even want it to capture the pressure sensitivity from my pen. I don't want to drag this. I just want to click. And we're just going to go around and tap. Okay, so now that I've got that all tapped in and it's giving me that kind of a out of focus kind of feel to it, what I can do now is I can look for patterns where I've, I've, I don't want to have patterns. And so I want to look for where I've made them just out of, because humans, we like patterns. Okay. And so I can look at this and say, okay, well, there's a pattern here and then it repeats here and then it repeats here. So I don't want to have that repetition. So how do I break this up and move it around? So then I can come over here to say maybe my permanent green and go just slightly lighter on it. And then using the same dabber brush, I can say, okay, let me, how do I maybe break some of this up a little bit? Maybe I have this come out a little bit here. Uh, maybe there's a high point here. Uh, maybe there's a clump over here. Okay, and maybe there's like a one sticking up here, so it breaks up that curve that mirrors there. So maybe that's kind of coming around. Um, maybe I've got a little bit more kind of stuff coming through here and kind of moving that around. Um, you know, maybe just some different stuff in through here. And maybe I can grab a little bit of closer to a yellow here and go just a little bit lighter so I can give some real hot spots of color and maybe kind of bring it up a little bit. Okay. 
And then again, going back to the blender and maybe bringing it down in size just a little bit, I'm going to just kind of tap this. I blend it in. You can take, now at this point, you could just kind of circle a little bit. And, but it does kind of fade it in. That's what I'm actually trying to not do as much. So I just want to kind of tap it. And just kind of break it up a little bit here and there. Okay. Like so. All right. So now if you're doing a painting where you've got a lot of forest or woods or stuff like that, this is a nice way to add in just some quick background that uh, I'll push it. And then if you want to come back and select something and add in some dark areas to kind of break it up even more here and there, you could. Um, the main thing I would tell you with this is just don't, don't spend a lot of time on it because you'll fall into the trap. And I'm having to resist it right now, to be perfectly honest, the trap of trying to make it look like something, you know, trying to to um, control it too much. OK, so this is one of those things where you just kind of let it happen. But you can see by just using those two tools right there, we end up with something that in the background can be, you know, kind of an interesting look uh, for some bushes and stuff. OK. And you can throw in just a little bit. Of brighter stuff. Now it helps if you actually change brushes before you try to do that. And then just kind of fade this back. But see how even that gives you that feeling of a bigger tree and it kind of breaks up some of that silhouette and that kind of stuff. Um, now on one thing else I want to tell you too. So as you guys know that have followed me for a while, I have more than one monitor going. I have one that is showing me what it would look more like if it was printed. I have one that shows me um, kind of a halfway between these two and then this one, my Huion. One of the things that uh, I'm not real happy about with it is that it does tend to give me kind of a, um, a duller look to everything than what the actual printed is. And so on here, this looks very uh, subdued. On my other monitor, it looks very um, almost neon, you know. So it's very bright and uh, very overpowering. Okay, so now if you do that, if you have it and you feel like it's overpowering, then all you need to do is go over to Filter and then go to Hue Saturation. And maybe change it to something like I've got here, negative 25 and plus 5. Apply it. That really pulls everything back. Okay. And then you can play around with how you look. But on my other monitor, that looks more um, natural and subdued. It's not as neon. So hopefully it's not neon on your guys' side for everything. But um, anyway, so just feel free to play around with that but that's where you do it you just go to filter and hue saturation and then you can just kind of play around with it there okay All right, so now we've got that kind of in there okay so again just a quick way to add in some foliage it's like if you were doing this off in background or further back um then you could, you know, add to it. If you wanted to uh, make it something that was really way off in the distance, you can go to hue saturation or color balance. Uh, you could bring up, you know, reduce the colors and change it around to give it a little bit more of a distance and kind of play around with some of the, the look and feel of it. Okay. And remember, if you wanted it to be, if it was off in the distance, then you would want to add in more blues and have it kind of recede that way. And anyway, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and keep this here and then um, show you another thing that you can work on. So like if you're working on uh, trees and all that stuff and you've got, you said, Hey, I really want to have a, um, a reflection here. Like I want to have a lake or something. Okay. So the easiest thing to do for here is to make a copy of this by going right here to duplicate layers. All right. So now we have that. Now sometimes it will turn off your uh, pigment, uh, you know, for the 
color variation. Press T and then come over here and flip vertically and then go straight down. To me, that looks about right for a, a reflection. Okay. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now you wouldn't want to leave it just like that. That's too, um, now you could make that look like a reflection. I'm not going to lie. You could do it. Um, but for me, that's a little too uh, crisp. It would be, you know, it's like a mirror right now and that's not what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do control A. I'm going to go select square and I'm going to do remove. And I'm going to come down to about where I think my shoreline is, which would be right about maybe there. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to do shift control I, delete, shift control I, come back to here. Now, this is where you can tap into some of Rebel's functionality and get kind of a really cool look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pause for diffusion. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to wet the layer. And then I'll show you on this. This is wet now. This is not. Okay. So I'm going to keep this selected. And I'm going to bring my tilt so that this is the top. This is the bottom. Everything is going to tilt towards this way. And now what I want to do is come over to my water tool. And I'm just going to go along the top and add in some splatters of water here and there. And I'll just come down through this. But I want to add more at the top. Now, if you want to do it straight, you just go shift. So wherever you want it. So like if I wanted it here. OK, so see how this moves around. So I can just go um, shift, click, come all the way over, click. And now everything, as long as I hold shift down, it's just a straight line there. OK, so now I've got a lot of water here. I've got splats of water here and there. And now what I want to do is I'm going to turn off the water thing so I can see the image. I've got my board tilted. I'm going to unpause diffusion. And you can see that it is starting to run. Let this run. And now that I've let that run just for a little bit, I'm going to reverse it all the way straight back like so. But see how it's kind of blending all these together and giving that streaky, almost ethereal water reflection kind of look. So I'm going to let this run. You can see it's going right here where it's collecting. That's the ripple of water rippling out. And when it gets to a stage that I like, which I think right about there works good, I'm going to go ahead and pause it again. Okay. I'm going to come back over to my blending tool. I'm going to go to soft blend. And now I'm just going to go in vertical streaks up and down. Just as trying to stay as vertical as possible. I'm going to streak these up and down. Now I can even, I lowered the opacity down. So the opacity is at 20. Okay, I can bring the size up if I want to, but I don't want it too big because I want to leave. I don't want it to wipe away all this ethereal stuff. Okay, so I want to take advantage of that. So I'm just going to streak some of this back into that darker color there. And then I'm going to bring it way down in size and just again kind of keep going along and adding some vertical and just trying to maybe look for any of these really harsh separations, you know, and just kind of fade them out into the surrounding area. This worked great, by the way, if you did this in blues um, and you could actually make it look really cool for kind of an underwater scene. Like if this is all blue and you did a difference texture up here, you can make this look like a really cool uh, sunlight coming through the water. Maybe I'll show you that. Okay. So that gives me a really interesting look for it. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dry the layer. 
because I don't want it to move around. I don't want to have to bother keeping the diffusion paused. I'm going to do Control D. That's going to leave me a little bit of a, of a ripple here from where the paint had gathered back up against the selection. And I'm just going to go down and just vertically up and down on this to soften it ever so slightly. Just to get rid of this ridge. Like so. Just like that. And so now I've gotten rid of that ridge. And you can see this gives a really cool kind of reflective look to it. Okay. Now the next thing you can do is you can make another layer on top. I have a stencil I'm going to use here in just a second, but I wanted to show you how to do this without a stencil. So let's say, for example, I wanted to go with this blue and I wanted to have um, like, you know, subtle ripples in the water. OK, so I would come over to maybe like either the flat oily uh, where I can put it on there or um, I would go possibly to my pen tool with the water turned all the way down. OK, and maybe to the round right here, the fountain pen, because I can do variations in pressure. This is actually how I made my ripple stencil. So I can just come in here and just make some water ripples here and there. Okay. And just, I'm not worrying about it. I'm just trying to stay more or less horizontal. Okay. And then once I have those how I like them, I can press T again. And then I can really just kind of stretch them out like so. Hit Enter. Hit N. Keeping my soft. And then I can come back over and just kind of play around and push and pull these. So once I've got that on there, here, let me just smooth this out. So once I've got that on there, all I need to do is I can come back with like the eraser if I want to and just kind of soften some of it and go kind of this arching eraser kind of thing and just kind of play around tapering the ends slightly like so. And it's just a matter of going, you know, this up and back and forth kind of a feel which kind of a flattened out figure eight, like so. So that's how you would build this up if you're doing it by hand. All right. It's just kind of do this, and then come back and add some more lines, and then come back and add some more, erase some more, kind of a push and a pull. All right, kind of thing. But you can get some interesting variations and, and some water. Okay. So that's how you can do that. But let me show you what I do because, as you can see, that takes time. And this is why I made my stencils. So if I go to my waters and I go to waves here and I go to turn off lock size ratio and stretch this out. Back on lock size ratio, I can drag this down, kind of going here. So I can get it like that. And then what I can do is come to here and go with border, which is one of the cool things with uh, Rebel. Go to my airbrush and just softly airbrush over it so that I get kind of a cool feel. And then I can hit backspace. And you can see, boom, I've got all that. I've already done the work to make the stencil, so now I don't have to do the work again. That's why I use stencils. All right. So I'm leaving this here because I want to show you that what I was talking about, that underwater kind of feel to it. Um, but here's one of the things that I think can give this kind of a, a, a more interesting pop. Now, this I went with this bluish kind of color because we've got kind of a blue sky, so it would reflect a little bit more. So that's why it's you know kind of has that look to it. 
You can change it, however. So if, say, for example, I wanted to make a couple copies. Okay. Now that's obviously going to be way too strong. Okay. It's just not going to look right. But if I come down here to this one, turn off pigment, go to uh, overlay, that's going to give me that. And then I can come here and turn off pigment, come here and do overlay again. Oops, turn off pigment, do overlay. It's going to give me that subtle. So I come to this one and I click on multiply, drop it down to maybe something like that. So I can get kind of a subtle kind of layering of, and you see you kind of need these. You can actually do another one here like that. And it can give you, so like if you've got more of a shadowed area, like say this was shadowed right here, like up through here, and then you make another one. So let me do this, and then I'll do normal and pigment. So like if I wanted to have this back in here shadowed, so I've got those other layers underneath it. I've got an overlay, an overlay, and an overlay, and then down here I've got a multiply, and let's just go ahead and move that down to 25. And then I've got this normal one here. So I can come in with the eraser and just go to soft, right bracket key, and I can erase some of that. And it really, see how it pushes that water up underneath it? Okay, so again, if you're doing this from a distance and you want to kind of play around, now you've got where it gives you that feeling of the water kind of recedes back and this goes up underneath there. So it's kind of a cool way to do it. Okay, so I can leave those there. Now, if you do this, one of the things with Rebel is if I merge all of these, it usually messes up my layers that I have with all of my overlay, multiply, blah, blah, blah. So let's try it. Yep, see, it flattened everything back out. So I'll control Z undo that. And then what you could do is just make a new group like so. All right. Then you can take all of these and just click on the top one, shift, click on the bottom and drop them into that group. Okay. And then you've got water. So then what I can do is I can make a new layer on top. This is in that water. If I don't want it in that same group, I just drag it up out of it like that. Okay. And so I've got that there. Now, if I was trying to do this where I wanted to show like an underwater type scene, what I can do is I can come to something soft, like maybe my marker brush and just go to like bullet and then grab maybe this not quite white color, but a little bit off. And then right here along this, just kind of following where these are. You can give it that feeling that you can see below it. Okay. And so this would give you that kind of that cutaway. And you can emphasize this by playing around with perspective. Like if you had a tree limb coming down, it came down and then down here, it got a little bit bigger and shorter and, you know, that kind of stuff, kind of like a straw looking through a glass, but this is how you could kind of play around with that. Then the other thing you can do, even if you're not doing this part, like say you wanted to mess with these back here, one of the things you can do to add some things, look for these little raised areas and then go back in lightly and add some sparkles here and there, just on the raised parts and like pick from it. Like again, if the light's coming from there, you'd want it to be on the upper side for it. And you can start adding those in. Okay. So that's how you can get a really kind of a cool look. And then if you were doing this as water, what I would probably do, let's make a duplicate of this layer. And let's do T ever so slightly. Zoom out. Stretch it. So imagine if this was more of a light colored, bluish color. It would give you that feeling. Of light streaking through. Okay. Enter. Take my selection tool here and then delete. And see that will start to give us, and you could even again play around with that. 
go to uh, color balance. I can change the color so it has a little bit more blue in it. And see how that separates it out. And now you've got some really interesting look there. You can even go to protect the transparency. Go to your airbrush. Maybe grab a little bit of that blue and just kind of add in some streaks here and there. And so like if you wanted to put fish and stuff down there, you could. And that would give you that feeling of being able to see like you're maybe at eye level looking under the water uh, kind of stuff. So, you know, just another way to play around. But if this were doing like a boat or an ocean scene or something like that, and you wanted to add some really cool, you know, perspective or something like that, then you could go down here and add in uh, different things to, to kind of make that really cool. All right. And that's also where you could come back with your uh, smudge tool and maybe even soften it. A little more of emphasize. You can come back and do more stuff, blah, blah, blah. Okay. <clears throat> Just kind of an interesting way to get some neat perspectives. One of the other things I would do with this is probably go to something like my selection tool, like so. Make sure it's on add. You know, something like that, and then maybe just take the airbrush blue. I'm going to change it out a little bit. Maybe even a little purple or something. But you can see how that'll give you kind of a neat, cool effect for looking underneath it. All right. Just a little something to think about if you wanted to try it. Okay. But let's say that you didn't. It's like, oh, you know, actually, I don't want to do that. Of this be a full lake. Okay. Well, that's fine. Just come back to your waters. Control T. Just like so. And there you go. You've got more of your water kind of coming around. Now, when it's uh, kind of like this and you've got this much ripple, that will give you that feel of maybe it's more shallow water. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to play around with it being more of a shallow water, then what you could do is underneath the ripples and above the stuff here, um, you could go in and add in some rocks and stuff. So, like, if you wanted to paint them in, you could go ahead. If you have my other stencils, you could just, again... Turn, stretch it out, move it down. That's interesting. Raw umber or something, airbrush. Put a burnt sienna. Little paints gray. The very bottoms, a little bit of black. This is also a great way to do ocean foam, by the way. So then once I've got some of that put in there, all I need to do is kind of pick out some of these. If you watched my uh, video on doing the snow village kind of thing, the Norway Northern Lights, then all I want to do is just kind of find some of these spots on the upper right-hand side. Give these a bit here and there, like so. And then just take the and kind of soften, I'll break up some of those here and there. And again, maybe grab some of the burnt sienna, kind of push some of this back. So that brown will really give that feeling of the rocks.
So that way, if you, again, if you wanted some um, shallow water, that'll give you that kind of feel. If you don't want the shallow water, don't put in the brown. Okay. Um, and don't have this stretch down so far. Just bring your stencil down and do a little softer stuff here and there. The nice thing about this is if you play around with it, you can come up here and then play around with your the opacities and so forth. Okay. I'm going to push and pull that and make it as subtle and soft as you want. So that way, if it's just softly moving water, that's cool. If you do control click and say that you had these over here and you really wanted these to shine a little bit more, we go just a little bit brighter. So I've selected the area and then just add here and there, maybe hitting it. And see, that gives it that feel. And then you can soften it and play around. But I just want to show you kind of the technique of what to play around with to get a nice water feel. You know, and you could put rocks in here, like if you wanted to put some rocks and some water, white water going around it and that kind of stuff, you definitely could. Um, if you wanted to take like the pencil and just kind of come along the shoreline ever so slightly, you could. If you wanted to have it where it looks like water is kind of on a couple of rocks and maybe get a little bit of white water, just add some of those in here and there like so. And that really kind of starts bringing everything together and tying it into where the light is and that kind of stuff. So it's a really quick way to get some water, get some reflections, get some ideas, um, and play around with it, you know, just by sketching it with the pencil. And you want these to stay fairly horizontal. Um, now the water just looks kind of like it's kind of streaming off ripples here and there to kind of tie some of this together. Let's see, that gives it that really wet water feeling now. And like it's coming across. Okay. And then let's say, for example, you wanted to have some trees here in the front. Like maybe there's some that are, um, I don't know, coming across like this area like that. You know, like again, this was your background and this water, and then you wanted to have some area of focus. Okay, so you could do that too um, and play around with some of the the effects that Rebel does. So let's play around with those too. All right, so I've got these all here. I'm going to make a new layer, bring it outside of my water layer. And just for uh, playing around with and kind of not messing with uh, some of the background stuff for a second here because I want to focus on something. Let's say we're going to make some trees that have uh, just kind of a smoother bark. Okay. I'm going to come to my watercolor brush. Actually, I'm going to go to my oil brush first and pick one of these just brushes here. Uh, I'm going to go with this kind of grayish color here and thinking about maybe where my tree is going to be. Like say if I'm going to have it coming across like so. Uh, and maybe it's got another one kind of coming down through here. Okay. Now if you need to, you can definitely bring this all back and think about how the landscape is. But, you know, so if I've got a tree coming across here and maybe... I don't know. Let's do maybe another one. Maybe there's one sticking out of the water here. Okay. All right. So, and then, you know, and, and think about how your composition is going to be. All right. Drawing these in with these really rough brush for a reason. I'll show you in just a second. Okay. Something like that. And let's grab a little bit of this grayish purple that I have here. So again, we've got kind of cut the sides like so. And grab a little bit of that highlight color we used for the water. 
So by grabbing these colors that we've used, we're starting to build some color harmony. Okay. All right. Now I want to take my tool here and I'm going to cut out, straighten up the edges of these trees. Because again, what we're thinking is a smooth bark tree. So I don't want these rough edges because if they're rough, then that's a rough bark tree. I'm still staying very loose with it and I can keep cutting away what I don't want because I've got this selected to be an additive selection. Okay. Out of this part right here. Okay, so just delete. And that cleans them up. Uh, that little bump. So let's delete that too. Okay. So now control D. I'm going to put this least little bit of a line between these right here. And delete. I'll come back later and fix that, but I want it there for now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on pigment so that I'm getting a true pigment paint. I'm going to do uh, protect transparent like so. And now I'm going to change my tilt to where it's right about here. I'm going to pause diffusion. Okay. I'm going to grab my watercolor brush. Well, first I'm going to grab my water brush and I'm going to hit this splatters and I'm going to splatter on some of this. I just want random splotches random splotches. Okay, so there's more water there. I don't want a whole lot. Turn that off. Go to my watercolor brush. Come down to my spatters. And that's a little large, so left bracket. I want to grab the sky color. Come a little darker. A little bit of this in here tie those together. I'm even going to grab a little bit of this oxide green. Kind of throw some of that in there. Just grab. Makes this kind of splotchy there. And so I'm grabbing these because these are fairly random. Okay, as far as what they lay down. All right. And it's going to give me kind of an interesting look. So I'm going to unpause this. I'm going to grab my blow tool here. And I'm just going to, in the same direction that the tilt is, I'm going to blow it across. And then I'm going to go back the other direction. And when I get something I like overall, I'm going to pause it. Smudge tool and my textured. Increase that a little bit. Break up some of those flowing lines. Just like so. Okay, so that gives me an interest. I'm going to dry it. So now I don't have any more flowing to it. So I can turn off my pause diffusion. Okay, so that gives me a kind of a neat under layer there. So I'm going to go back to my brush here and maybe grab let me check something on the thick dry. I'm going to reset it. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this color again. And I'm going to I throw some spots in where I want not only highlight, but just a little bit of texture for the bark. Because even a smooth tree bark uh, is going to have some texture. Okay, grab just a little of that burnt sienna. And kind of lay some of that in as well. Change the size. Just lay some here and there. Maybe a little bit more down here at the bottom. 
bottom. Okay, so then I got that there. I can grab a little bit of the Van Dyke, add a little bit more. And so I've got some of that in there, and then all I gotta do is go back to my blending, bring the size down, and I can just here and there hit this. I can also stay with my brush and go to the blending here, which sometimes I like better. And just kind of soften and move around some of these. And so this just becomes to where you're just trying to blend it and add in as much texture and kind of feel as you go around through it. Again, I like... Um, using stencils for this because it can save time. Like, so if I was going to do birch trees, I have birch tree stencils. Um, I have a few others here and there. So one of the new brushes I'll be releasing here shortly is this one. This um, old wood brush. And so it allows me to kind of get some bark kind of feel. So if you already have my Rebel brushes that you bought the Mega Pack, you'll get this one as well. This is a this will be a new one because it has lifetime updates. But it can give some interesting kind of a but it's made specifically for like trees and all that. All right, so I'm going to turn transparency because I want to kind of go outside the lines a little bit. Okay. Fill in some of that. Like so. And this again, this is one of those things you can sit here and play around with and push around and pull and to your heart's content. So that can give an interesting look. And then I can come back over here. Like let's go flat oily. And let's say I want to grab a little bit of maybe some of this color. Actually for this I'm going to turn it back on for protect transparent because I'm just kind of throw in some colors just like so okay so now for this I think it would be cool like if I took one of my stencils say for example this one again turned off lock size stretched it out rotate it drag it over So if I just wanted to kind of play around with some of the texture and get kind of that impressionistic kind of brush strokes. And I always just look for like, where does it look interesting to overlap it? So now we've got some interest kind of stuff there. And then from here, it's just a matter of you can go in with your, um, your brushes. And then, for example, if you wanted to have some branches kind of coming off and around. I find for branches, it's easier to go from the... Um, outside this thin part and apply more pressure as I get close. I didn't think that tends to work. And then I take my eraser, like the um, 
square medium or the square hard or even the round medium. And then I come back in and just kind of fix up anything I don't like. And a lot of times I'll do these on a separate layer too. So that way if I really want to have control over my limbs, I can. You know. And then just kind of come back and forth and blend them in. Kind of drag out some of the color. Like so. And again, it's just a matter of playing around, pulling in different stuff. But, you know, if you um, have my stencils, use them. It makes your life so much easier. So, like, if there's just random brushes that, you, I mean, random uh, limbs that you wanted to have, you can match this one up and do it. You can grab... old branch here, for example. Let's say we wanted to add it here. Smear it in. I like doing it this way because then I've got the color harmony of it blending in with what was already there. Like so. And then I could take a little bit of the dark color here and then just kind of add it where it makes sense. Press 4. And you can get some really quick So again, you can really mess around with that and then come down to the bottom down here and kind of blend this in a little bit. Sometimes this does work a little better with the actual blending tool versus the brushes. But I try to do it with the brush as much as I can because I think it gives it a better feel. And then when you've got something like this in here, again, remember to take your something like your pencil, grab a little bit of that highlight color, do some ripples going around it, it seats it in the water. Like so. And grab a little bit of this brighter color here. And hit some of those edges. Okay. But that's how you can do some of the trees and stuff. And then if you wanted to add in more limbs, you can add in more limbs. You can uh, use the brushes. For example, if you don't have, let's, let's say you're wanting to freehand these and not use stencils. Okay. Again, you can go on another layer. And exact same thing we did back here with these. You could start doing with these brushes up here. So like if you wanted to add flower, uh, not flowers, but uh, leaves and stuff along the top, you could. You could also um, grab some of the, like if you have the grainy pen works great. For if you're on a new layer and you want to add in, you know, some grasses. Again, selecting from some of the background. And kind of seeding some of this. You can. Um, but then if you wanted to add in bushes and trees and more to the front, you can just, again, take your dabber brush. Or if you have some of the tree brush here, you can add in and get some of that those leaves and kind of come around. And add in and then the same the exact same thing we did back here just add in some highlights obviously i would if i was doing if i was going to add leaves here that are going to be kind of this green here i would go back to this green here and either play around with the colors or just add a layer over top with a really light bluish color fill that layer 
and then bring the opacity down. And you can really kind of push some of that back and forth. So it's just like putting a glaze on it. Kind of lighten it up with the bluish color and then come in here and add in some of your greens back in and stuff. So that way you can really play around with the colors that you want. So like if you wanted more greens and you wanted to build them up, you could start doing it anyway. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't want to run down this rabbit hole too much. But. So anyway, I hope that helps with some techniques for showing how to do some different things, how to play around, get water, how to get some distant bushes and foliage without spending a lot of time on it. Again, that same technique can be used for closer ones. You would just do a mass of it and then go in and add specific highlight to pull out more leaves. Um, how to play around with bark and get some of the, the randomness of it. Uh, again, you could then come in and add more and use stencils and so forth to really break it up and give you that kind of a look. And just some of the different techniques that you can use by letting Rebel do some of what it does really well with some of the water uh, effects that it has for having everything come down through it. So if you have questions, if uh, you need more clarification, you want to see more, just let me know. And I'll you know make sure and answer those. Just leave the comments and everything uh, wherever you find this video. All right. Thanks.